In this video, I'm going to be changing the high range gears in the transfer case of the LT95A. The LT95A is fitted to Land Rover Parentis and has a few minor differences from the civilian LT95. My Parenti has the PGO winch fitted, so there's a few extra steps involved. If your transfer case oil is suspiciously silver, a bit like mine here, it's probably a sign of trouble. I recommend following the instructions in the service manual G179 to lock tight the bolts holding the low range output gear to the centre diff housing. I like using this 9 16th prop shaft nut tool, and I have found undoing the diff flange first makes the nuts at the handbrake easy to get to because you can hold the shaft out of the way with one hand. The handbrake lever assembly can be quite fiddly to remove although you can access this through the hatch underneath the driver's seat. This lock tab stops the intermediate shaft bolt from coming loose. You should be able to access this bolt head without dismantling to this point and if you have the common jumps out of high range issue you need to check this bolt is torqued to 120 foot pounds. This bolt can be really tight but a few gentle bursts of the rattle gun brings it loose. At this stage, you don't want to wind the bolt out all the way because it's supporting the intermediate gears. Before I can remove the bottom cover, I need to undo the chain driving the winch outward. Removing the main shaft bearing cover gives me access to the drive sprocket. I like using a screw gun because it speeds disassembly up a bit, but we do have to be careful when working with aluminium threads. The silicon I used to seal up the cover last time works well, almost too well. I had to resort to some rough methods to break the seal and remove it. Now we have access to the chain, it's simply a case of finding the removable link and undoing it, just like any other motorbike chain you've done before. Now there's nothing to stop us removing the bottom cover. Here you can see the lower sprocket driven by the chain and the dog clutch that's pulled in and out by that lever. Now at this point I've gone on the wrong track. You should remove the intermediate cluster before removing the speedo housing. It's a lot easier that way. It is possible to remove the differential without taking removing the intermediate cluster but only if the bearing and the high range output gear are not stuck to the differential carrier. In this case, they were stuck, so we need to remove the intermediate shaft first. Once you can support the gears up from underneath, pull the bolt out, and a lot of jiggling may be required before you can free the assembly. It should slide out easy enough once you get it loose. At this point, you want the center differential to be engaged so the dog clutch stays in position when we've slid the dif center differential out. The splines you can see there lock onto the front prop shaft output flange. Here I'm reassembling the intermediate cluster onto the hollow shaft. First it's the low range output, then the center gear is, which is driven from the gearbox, then the high range output gear and lastly the small spacer that you don't want to forget. The top hat nut, high range gear, input gear, low range gear, and the spacer and bolt. Starting with low range selected, then we have neutral in the middle, and high range selected. You can see how the input gear is able to spin freely when neither high or low are selected. Now we have the center differential in the vise for disassembly. Unfortunately, my camera lens is fogged up at this point, and I didn't notice. First, I'm undoing the bolts that hold the low range gear onto the differential carrier housing. Then I'm tapping it off with a hammer. It was quite stubborn. The next thing we have to do is get the bearing off so we can access the carrier half bolts. Again, undoing the carrier bolts in a bit of a star pattern because of the stress that's on these. Then the carrier half can come off. 
you need to remember that these spider gears are a match set and you shouldn't go moving them all around. When replacing the carrier half, it, you've got to get it lined up right, it can be a little tricky. I'm adding a good bead of Loctite 263, also known as stud lock, because we really don't want these bolts coming apart. It's a good idea to use new spring washers as well as you, if you have them. You probably noticed I've started every bolt off by hand. Now I'm just snugging them down with the uh, drill before torquing them to about 60 to 64 newton meters, it specifies in the Land Rover manual. Hopefully, you used a center punch to put a dent in the low range gear and the carrier halves because the carrier halves are a match set and balanced together so you have to mark them on disassembly. The low range gear however has bolt holes that will only line up one way to the differential half. We just need to torque these down to the same 60 to 64 newton meters. This is the result of the carnage caused when the bolts holding the low range gear to the differential housing had started to come loose, probably because they were never loctited on assembly. You can see here some of the bolts are snapped off, although they mostly undid themselves, got chewed up in the speedo housing and then blew through it. It caused some cracking which I managed to weld up alright. The casing actually welds quite well. Now reassembling, we're going to slide the center differential in. A bit of wiggling will be required of course as you get the splines to engage properly. Then we'll push it on with the speedo housing. At this point, you need to consult the manual and make sure you have the shimming set up properly for the bearing preload on the center diff. The shimming can be quite, quite tedious. There, there are shims in the behind the bearing race in the speedo, speedo housing, but you also need to pay attention to the gasket that's used on the speedo housing. You can see right here that that amount of play was too great when you can grab the hold of the low range gear and move the whole diff side to side that's too much movement it'll add a lot of backlash to the drivetrain you need to set the preload properly as per the manual some more blurry footage here as I'm replacing the intermediate shaft into the transfer case this took me a few goes it was really tight really hard to line up perfectly straight you've just got to wiggle and push make sure your assembly make sure your cluster is tight and once you can hold the whole cluster up there you can slide the bolt through and start winding it into the thread by hand you do have to pay attention to the pins at either end of the cluster when you're reassembling they need to go in the slots up to the point and these pins are important because they control the holes where oil is fed into the hollow shaft. Next we're talking it up to 120 foot-pounds. Um, it does specify I think 120 to 145 I like to go at the lower end of that. Now we can refit the bottom of the case. I could reach in, grab the chain and run it around the sprocket. It was quite fiddly but a doable job. You can see the removable link there. I've left the bearing and cover off at the moment just to make it easier to fill with oil. Next up we've got everybody's favourite job, the brake drum shoes. I find it's easier to sit the top shoe in first and then I can use both hands to pull down on the bottom shoe and slot it into position. We're pretty much done now. This is the prop shaft nut tool I really like using. It's 9 16 so it fits properly and you can get in there with the drill. It makes this job much more bearable. Just to recap, if you own a Land Rover with an LT95 transmission, I recommend you lock tight the low range gear onto the center differential housing. I will drop a link with a work instruction that details this procedure. But while you're in there, it's recommended to also lock tight the bolts holding the differential halves together.